First of all, great to be here. This is an amazing conference. And so when David asked me to come here, David and Josh asked me to come, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about what's happening in the technology and media world, but all through the lens of what's happening from the perspective of the user. And so I'm gonna take you on a ride very quickly through a number of different things that are going on, everything from what's happening with consumer time to super users to the impact of TikTok gaming, and then finally, um, now at this point, almost the cringeworthy term of, of metaverse. So let's start with consumer time. This is uh, what we call our attention clock. And so what we've done is, and then we've done this over the last six or seven years, we've looked each year at what's happening in terms of how people use technology and media over the course of a day. And when you account for multitasking, because you can look at so many of these activities and look at that they're doing, somebody's doing one of them and something else, we get to a 32 hour day. Um, just to show you how this looks like with, uh, without a pie chart and these different colors, what you can see is that the great majority of the day is spent on video. Um, you may wonder why audio, because audio is an ambient medium. People are listening to audio while they're driving. They can be doing something else. And, um, and then if you look at what's happened over time, um, you see that, that these, these have changed. And the, in a lot of ways, people talk about what happened to the pandemic. And there's a lot of press these days that most of the technology companies overshot the pandemic and didn't realize what would happen with consumer time and attention. What we're seeing is it jumped during the pandemic, but it's largely been sustained. And we think that's going to, to make a huge difference for so many businesses and maybe the ones that are cutting costs are finding that not only did consumer time increase, but that it expanded and went to other places. So everybody is using more technology and media, but it's not, not all the same. And there's a group of users, we call them super users, who are spending a great deal more time than everybody else using technology and media. And they're going to be very important as we think about how do you influence people, how, how do you bring them to your property, how do you get them to buy. And we're calling them super users. And about 22% of all users, of all adults, are super users, and 78% are all others. So let's look at how this breaks out in time. We said average around 13 hours a day multitasking time. However, when you look at that 78%, what you see about those people are spending about nine hours a day with technology and media. Super users on a multitask basis are spending over 18 hours a day. And if we look at, they spend significantly more time with media and technology across all formats than everybody else. So you can see the purple bars are super users and the blue are all other users. And it's consistent, it's across every, every type of activity during the course of a day. And they also account for a great deal of dollars spent. So you've got that 22% that account for 44%, it's almost double the amount that everybody else is spending. Um, you've got 80% of those people are accounting for gaming um, and music and podcast, 80%. Um, but also, if you go by and you look at where they're spending their money in different categories, you've got 22% that are accounting for 60% of all spend on e-commerce. And so what we're going to see is a shift for most companies from trying to serve everybody to trying to serve those super users. We are moving to, to a world across the commerce business where it's gonna be about best customers, not necessarily all customers. And connectivity. This is really important. What you see is that super users spend um, much more on connectivity. So if you look at 85% of super users subscribe to an unlimited data plan, and 66% don't subscribe to, I'm sorry, 66% uh, subscribe to an, an, um, an unlimited data plan. So this is a consistent theme across every piece of the technology and media industry. 
So let's talk about TikTok. TikTok is on everybody's minds, and there's some reason for it. And it ties very well into what we see people doing with their time and attention. So it's not just going to disrupt the media business. It's going to disrupt the technology business e-commerce. Let me show you why. When we look at social video, it's increasing. So we're now at a point where we believe today we're roughly um, 47 uh, minutes a day of social video. We expect that that's going to grow to 59 minutes a day. And if we look at user growth, and this is globally, each one of the major social video platforms is going to continue to grow. You're getting to a point, YouTube, roughly three and a half billion people globally are using some sort of uh, mobile or, or internet application or, or device each day. Um, you see how big YouTube is gonna be and each one of them are growing. And yet when we look at TikTok, it dominates all social video and time spent. So you have TikTok, the average TikTok user is spending 71 minutes a day using TikTok. And that compares across the board to all of the other social sites. And you can see that this is, it's really sucking the air out of everywhere else. So let's not just talk about um, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. This is in the context that TikTok is shaping the world. And people keep asking me why. And in and, and a lot of ways, if you think about social media, social media has, for a long time, it's been a big party. And don't, don't expect that the big party isn't going to move on. And TikTok is a good example of that. Um, we forecast that it's going to steal share from everybody else. So this is, these are our forecasts over the next couple years, uh, all the way to 2025, in terms of what's going to happen. So we see TikTok growing by 15%, Instagram 3%, Reddit 3%. Twitter, regardless, despite all the drama around Elon Musk, the reality is Twitter is, about, is maintaining its own. But we see uh, Snap going down about 1%, and Facebook going down 18% over the next years. Everybody in social media, they're struggling for how they're going to catch up with TikTok, how they're going to take that passive video swiping experience. And you see that they've all introduced something. Going back to August of 2020, you've got Instagram. Snapchat has a spot, spotlight. YouTube has added in shorts. And in a lot of cases, you don't even know if you're moving into a short. Um, and Facebook has, um, has introduced Reels. Once again, as much as people are using these formats, um, you see some real user backlash. And you also see that they're not able to catch up to TikTok. But there's more. And what you see is that TikTok also will have a huge impact on search. And so these are three screens with TikTok. And they basically show you a search, a search that somebody might make. And in one case, they might be going, they may be looking for a television set. In another, they're actually looking at it at, at Best Buy. Another, they, they end up, it ends up at Walmart. And what you can see is you go in and you look, best laptop. It's no longer about I go to a text link. I literally link to a set of videos where somebody has already tells me what it is, not just what, they, what it is, but also what they bought, what they paid for, where they bought it. And where are we going to go next? It's audio. So we have large tech companies, whether it's Apple or Spotify or Amazon, have bet a large piece of their businesses today. An important growth driver has been audio. And we see audio as TikTok's next place. It's going to be you can discover music. You can integrate with Apple. And you can, once again, it comes down to search. It's easier to search on TikTok where somebody's featuring the music than it is for them to go somewhere else and even search in, in Spotify or in Apple Music. So gaming. When we look at where people are spending a great deal of their time and who's spending the most amount of time, it's in gaming. And the reason why I say that gaming is the next technology paradigm, because it's going to have a massive influence across every type of technology. And it's only going to grow. In fact, this will continue to be the fastest growing technology and media business. So this is our forecast 
for the growth of games. And what we see it going from about 182 billion today to, two, in 2026, about 2000, two billion, 218 billion. And, and if you look at what's happened through um, going back to 2018, you can see that this has been a rocket ship. And a lot of it has to do with the popularity of major games, the fact that games are accessible on every device. And we think that a lot of this is going to lead into the way we view the metaverse. Um, the number of global gamers has increased, and some of that is because they're accessible on so many devices, not just, um, not just a console or a PC, but also on smartphones. But here's a number that's really fascinating. Um, you've got the US video game audience that is increasing. So from 2019 to 2022, it goes from 124 million to 148 million. But what's really fascinating is you would have expected that the average monthly video game spend would have gone down. And it's actually on average, it's gone up. It's gone from $19 a month in 2019 to 2387 in 2022. And this gives you a sense about how important this is going to be for the growth of all technology and media and how it's going to have such an influence across all of the companies that we view as the most important in these industries. Um, I mentioned a moment ago about multi-platform and availability. These are some of the top game franchises. And what you can see is that the ones that really matter are the ones, all of these are available on multi, multiple platforms. It's Xbox, it's PlayStation, it's on PC, it's on mobile. But the, if I, you were to take away one thing today from what I'm talking about, it's going to be the fact that so many activities are going to be taking place in, inside of games. And if it's so many things already are taking place inside of games, we don't have to wait for there to be a metaverse. But this is where we're going to find every technology company, every media company is going to be looking for their place in games. And so many of these activities we're already seeing are happening inside of games. And with a global population of 2.2 billion gamers, this is going to be so critical to the growth of all the companies. Um, the major technology companies, it's not gone unnoticed. And we've constructed something we call our gaming stack. And it's everything from being a publisher to having a virtual world all the way to gaming as video. And you can see that each of the major technology companies are buying their way into gaming. And in fact, a year ago, we forecast that most of the major gaming companies would be owned by technology companies. And in fact, if you look at the value of most of the major gaming companies, they're equivalent to one day's volati volatility in each of the major tech company stocks. So, and you look at the ones that are the most ver fully integrated through the stack, and it's not who you would have thought of. It's, of course, Microsoft, which is pretty much everywhere but having a video gaming um, so video uh, as video, ga sorry, gaming as video service. And then you see others like Sony who are also extremely deep. Don't be surprised if all of these companies, all the video game companies end up belonging to the technology platforms. And there's another piece of this, which is, um, which is from um, the online gaming piece of this. And if you look at, you can see that eSports, it's, it's really an incredible spectator sport. There's so much that's going on with it. And we forecast that that business is going to go from about 560 million a, uh, annual users to 700 million people who are watching esports. Now, let's talk about metaverse. Why do I say it matters now? Um, it's really reached its, its, its really peak hype cycle now. So if we look at about 20 years of foundation of the metaverse, and I'll show you that on a timeline. We hit the peak now, and we're already going down in the trough, and this is where we're gonna see sustained investment. If you think this is not some theoretical chart, we've actually done this based on Google Trends. And so you see that the number of searches, the interest is already in the trough, and this is a time for companies to invest. Why do I say 20 years of development? If we look back, and John Riccatello, we were talking about this earlier, really begins 
with The Sims in the early 2000s, but a lot of these platforms have come along in, in those past 20 years, and you see it going all the way towards most recently, you see, um, you see Horizon Worlds and, and others which are moving into the metaverse. Um, on the bottom here, you see all of the major technologies that have enabled it. And what do we see past in the next couple of years? Emergence of practical applications, a great deal more investment, and a number of also of in incredibly important technologies, um, including uh, some, of, some of the things that we're going to see, whether or not we see an augmented reality glass coming from, from Apple, we are going to see um, a great deal more. In fact, I'm sure John's going to talk about, about Unity Metacast. Um, why do I say it's here today? Because you have 300 million people today who are in, in virtual worlds that you could qualify as metaverse. And those people, on average, are spending about 10 hours a month. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean everybody. You've got people who are spending as much as 30, 40 hours a week in these virtual worlds. And they're doing a lot of activities. There are things that they can actually do, and there are things that they actually can do together. Why do I believe that it's also here? Is because games are really the only viable path to the metaverse. We can talk about NFTs. We can talk about all sorts of different areas. But at the end of the day, games have what it takes. There's users. They have shared experiences. The IP is there. The technology is there. Um, they're already creating digital twins. If you, you want to have fun, go on to a, go on to either AWS or Azure, and they show you can create your own digital twin. It's all here. But there's another reason why gaming is so important to Metaverse, which is today we have 148 million US gamers. 77% of them are doing non-gaming activities inside of games. And these games do their, their Metaverse environments. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare, just released. Uh, it gives you a sense this is truly a digital twin. It's photorealistic. You can find yourself here. You, are in another world. Um, we've seen, heard a lot about concerts. Fortnite continues. This is an Anya Nakamura concert in Fortnite. There are literally, not necessarily at the same time, there are millions of people doing these concerts. And this is an example I really love. This is Grand Theft Auto. And in Grand Theft Auto, there's a casino. It has nothing to do with the gameplay of the game. But today, you can't bet real money. But I can assure you, in the next year or so, you will be able to. When we talk to consumers, they want to do more creation. And so when we 35% of adults, they want to do something inside, whether it's creating their own avatar, they're creating, building something, creating a new game. And once again, if we look at this, the examples here, you've got Minecraft of people already building virtual examples of their campuses. This is Columbia University, where they built a virtual twin of the campus, and people actually graduate there. Um, this shows you how easy the tools are to build an avatar. This is um, what you can see. These tools are very easy. Pedo, Fortnite, Roblox. Anybody can do this. It doesn't require you to be a game developer. And here's Rust, where you can literally build yourself. All the tools are there. You can just select them. And um, then let's talk about people keep talking about metaverse as virtual reality. And 91% of the people today who are buying a VR headset are gamers. 78% of those people are using them for something else. And I mean, this is a good example, XR space. It isn't just about playing a game. It's about doing things together with other people. You have a cup of coffee. You can watch a, a film together. You can have a drink. And this is the power of VR. It's not a, just about being in a virtual world. However. It's unlikely VR and AR are going to power this. This is our forecast for VR and AR headsets. Um, we're expecting in 2026, 44 million sold. You end up with an installed base that is way too small for most of the world to experience their VR headset. And then something else that's incredibly important, which is the average VR user can't spend more than 20 minutes a day in VR. And so at any one session, it gets very difficult for this to be an activity. So finally, the question that everybody keeps saying to me is, metaverse, web 3, same thing. Here's web 3. 
it's all decentralized protocols and technologies, whether they're decentralized autonomous communities or it's, or it's NFTs or it's cryptocurrency, that's really not metaverse. We look at metaverse and we see it's all the things that I've been talking about. It's immersive experiences, it's social. In a lot of ways, this is what the browser was to the internet. It's not the technology, it's the user front end. And with that, I'm glad to talk to you and to David about what else I'm seeing. You see a lot, sit down. <laughs> okay, it's, it's kaleidoscopic listening to your presentations and I mean, he's got probably another 200 slides he didn't even show us, but what to you is the most surprising of all the things you've figured out recently about what's happening with tech? Uh, well, a couple, a couple things I've just talked about. One of them is TikTok, and not just in terms of the amount of time people are spending on it, but the amount of time that it's going to be used for other act activities, whether it's, um, whether it's not just you watching a video yourself, but it's social. So I just talked about search, music discovery. It's going to be um, e-commerce. So much of this is going to be reshaped by TikTok. And let's imagine TikTok's not going to last forever. These social platforms, and we're seeing also something called what we would call social splinter. So many new platforms are growing and they're gonna take more people's time away from Meta and others. And in terms of the metaverse, it's interesting, you know, Philip Rosedale, who you probably know, who I wrote about 15 years ago, who you could say is the world's leading expert on metaverse, right? He started Second Life. He's gone back to it recently. Yes. He says, you don't need VR or AR. You can do it in a 2D screen. That's effectively what you're saying is going to happen. It, there, there's no doubt if you spend time, first of all, Nobody needs a $1,500 uh, VR headset that's probably going to be really useless in two years. Um, this is, for the most part, if you look at those 300 million people that are in those virtual worlds today, very few of them. It's infinitesimally small, the number of people are actually using a VR headset in those. It's all 2D screens. And they're doing all the things that we would expect about Metaverse. They're creating their own worlds. They're interacting with other people. They're creating games. They're doing transactions. There's economies. What about the AR vision that many people, so to speak, that, that people think Apple is going to try to push us toward? You know, the glasses that will, you know, as they say, subtitle the world or, or you know, augment the world in our normal behavior. Is that something you see coming in the near future? Yes, but it, those are much more utilitarian. They're not about diving you deeper into an immersive world. Right. They're about connecting you to a digital world. It's connected to digital and the physical. Is right, it it's, yeah. and, and, and so look, I, I'm dying to see them. If you look at, um, if you look at HoloLens or Unreal or any of the other uh, uh, devices that are out there, they're very specific applications and they tend to be industrial ones. Um, I'm excited about that, about w whether AR glass or whatever else becomes a reality, but I don't believe it's a metaverse application that takes you deeper into an immersive world. So despite the Google Glass kind of failure, you know, going into uh, locker rooms and people freaking out, do you think we're pretty much likely, all of us, to be, or a good percentage of us, to be using some kind of AR tool built into something on our head within five years, 10 years? What would you predict? Yeah, a a absolutely. It's a it's yes. a very easy way. Nobody would have, if we'd looked back to 2007, would have been hard to imagine the amount of time that people would spend with with a handset. Um, this is going to build slowly, but but once again, it's an easier way of navigating your world, of providing information, of of really understanding what's going on. That is very different than you saying, I'm going to go deeper into an immersive world. Okay, I know you're a media guy, you're not a psychologist, but I think you were here last night and you heard that discussion. Do you worry about what all this is doing to our brains? Um, what I really worry about is the extent to which it takes away people's ability to deal with each other in real life. And uh, on one side, you could argue that being in a metaverse environment, you and I getting together, we may be thousands of miles apart, doing something together, it's maybe a better experience and we'll quickly lose ourselves, lose our thinking as avatars. And Mike clearly thinks that's gonna happen. Right, but, but at the same time, it's, um, it is worrisome. Think about all of the people, I mean, um, you, you know, I have two 22 year olds and I can tell you the amount of time, even though they're out with friends, they do find in sometimes 
being on social media is a substitute for, for being with real people. You mean they, re they react against it? Well, no, they actually, in, in a lot they of ways. They actually are substituting. They're, they're substituting. Okay, Absolutely. that's scary. Okay, because your kids are impressive. Listen, we got to wrap, but that was a great download. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. It's great to be here. Really good to have you.